My name is Nancy Farrow, also known as Mama Lou, and I'm the founder of Epic Experience. Epic Experience mission is to empower adult cancer survivors and thrivers to live beyond cancer. I hope that as you listen to Campfires of Hope, Living Beyond Cancer, you find hope, healing, and empowerment. Through stories and education, we aim to guide those impacted by cancer, and more importantly, offer love and support to anyone out there who needs it. This is Beyond Cancer. Hello, everyone. This is Gail, a.k.a. Sunshine. Welcome to an episode of Caring for Cancer on the Campfires of Hope podcast, where we'll talk with caregivers, patient advocates, and those who support cancer survivors throughout their journeys. Today, we have Carrie Glass with us, and Carrie is from Memories Live. And I'm not going to tell you any more about that. I want her to, to tell you all about it as we go. So, Carrie, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you. Great to be here, Gail. Thanks so much. So first, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and I always ask people to include one fun fact. Okay, my background, I was an art therapist. I learned about art therapy when I was a senior in high school, and I volunteered for an art therapist for a summer and went to college and decided I want to go to graduate school for art therapy. So I knew, you know, at age 17, really what I wanted to do. And I knew I really want, I wanted to work with the geriatric population. Mm -hmm. I always was really drawn to ge the geriatric population because I didn't really have my grandparents around growing up. I lost one set early and the other set had lived uh, in another country and I didn't see them too often. So I went to, college, majored in art with a focus in film and minored in psychology, then went to graduate school for art therapy and went to work at a nursing home right off the bat, worked wow. there for five and a half years, had the privilege of going to work every day to 400 grandparents who really oh wanted to Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> I never <laughs> even knew art therapy was a major. So that is amazing. And just to make sure I'm clear, like art therapy, like you're having them draw or paint or create in some way yes. as a form of therapy. That is amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. And especially with the elderly, like just um, a, a, a even wider uh, variety of things like tiling and ceramics and wow, the gamut of things and just to kind of stimulate their brains and keep them busy and then help them to kind of express themselves if they needed to express themselves. So I love doing that. And I had the privilege of running a lot of groups, which is when you work in a big place, you want to, you know, appease yeah. the masses. And then I had the ultimate privilege of being able to do a couple of individuals, what we call one-on-ones. And I would just sit and talk with these amazing mm. people who had stories of either, you know, fourth or fifth generation Americans and what their story was, or people who came off the boat from wherever they came from all wow. over the world and hear their stories that were so rich. And I said, can I, can we just write these down to one or two of them and create like a book? So I would go sit with them once a week and bring my notepad and write it down, then go back to my desk. Cause this is over 20 years ago. We didn't have laptops. Sorry to date myself. <laughs> and I would go back to my desk and type it up the story and then print it up. And the next week go bring it to them and then add more and then type it up and back and forth. And we made two books, had them laminated and bound and presented them to the families. And the families absolutely loved it. Oh, that is so cool. Of their, of their loved one's story. Um, I left the, the Manhattan and the nursing home on the best of circumstances to move out to the suburbs and raise and have a family. Mm -hmm. and I told myself that when my kids were both in kindergarten, then I would go back to work at a local nursing home, which I was volunteering at. And they said, you're overqualified to volunteer. You need to, to be employed here. And in the meantime, when I was raising my kids, every birthday party, every tri trip we take or every special occasion, I would take out my video camera, download it onto the computer, 
take the best footage of it, take photo, take the photographs from that occasion, set it all to music and make like five minute little quick memory oh, cool. movies of these things. And my yeah. boys would love to sit and watch them. During that time, I learned of a woman in a neighboring community who uh, passed away from lung cancer. She was 39. She had two kids under the age of five. Wow. And being a young mother then, it really struck me that these kids would not know the sound of their mom's voice, not no. know advice from their perspective, not be able to see where they got their mannerisms from. And right. what if I could take my skills as a movie maker and as an art therapist or an empath yeah. and sit with someone and help them to leave a legacy, help them to leave their story, help them to share their advice. And that night, Memories Live was born. Oh my gosh, you know, that's Memories amazing. Thanks. Yeah. So other so this woman, she you did you say she was a neighbor? The woman who had the lung? She was just someone in a neighboring town. So I I, I knew of her. Uh, yeah. And she passed away after before I'd thought of the idea. And, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any other connections to the cancer community or is this, well, now obviously you do through Memories Live, but prior to that, um, was there a family member or anybody else that you had a connection to in that way? No, not, no connection. But that one, understanding. And the interesting thing is you were, you had kids close to her age. You were a young mom. You could understand what those kids would be missing out on without their mom. And so I would imagine that uh, was a huge impetus in carrying this idea forward. Yeah. Um, what have you, and so now tell me a little bit about Memories Live and what you do through that and what you have learned from working with cancer survivors through that work. Okay. So how Memories Live works is, um, I made my first presentation at a, at a local cancer center and mm. I had to wait to have one, one client. And I originally wanted to be able to open this up to people who were no older than maybe 55 or 60. Mm. And I said, how am I even going to word this? You know, how am I going to turn people down? But I really right. want to do this for young people who have young kids. Right. And I said, let me just kind of see organically what's going to happen. And naturally, I got what I wanted. The average age of my clients is 55. Hmm. Um, but I did not gear this to people who had cancer. But I'd say about 90% of the people that I film have had cancer. Okay. I have de definitely filmed many other uh, diseases. So uh, basically how Memories Live works, like I made that first presentation to a bunch of social workers, and, and that's still what I do to this day. Uh, oncology or palliative care social workers are really um, my my biggest cheerleaders and uh, mm -hmm. people who, who share memories life. Cause I can't really walk into a facility and, and just hand out brochures room to room. Right. So I depend on uh, mostly social workers, nurse navigators, sometimes doctors, chaplains. And those are the individuals who are able to share memories live with their patients. Um, so a social worker will make a referral send me a phone number, email address, and I'll reach out to that person usually that day. I send them my questions that I came up with. And when I came up with the questions, I just simply Googled uh, questions kids want to know about their parents, uh, wow. things parents want to share with their kids, yeah. questions uh, kids want to know from their grandparents, things grandparents want to tell their, their grandkids, right. and all those kind of searches. And I came up with 24 pages of questions. Oh, my and gosh. And yeah, <laughs> so um, the first topic was grandparents. Then where did they live? Um, what was your relationship with them? What did they teach you? What what you love, what they cook, what what they cook? Um, yeah. what, what, did, what lessons in life did, did you learn from them? And then on and on. Then parents and, you know, another laundry list of questions. And the first few clients I had were shuffling through the pages. And I saw that it was great that they had so many choices, but it was a little stressful at the same yeah. time. So then I whittled it down to 18 pages, then to 11. And then I said, I just got to do it on one. Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean that I took out all those subtopics and, and all those questions. They're in my mind. They're, they're yeah. 
stapled in there. And um, I ask them, so I just give the bare minimum, grandparents, parents, childhood, siblings, yeah. uh, and on and on and on. I can give you more examples if you'd like. And I tell people, um, here's the, the questions and the topics. I want you to look, look them over, omit anything you don't want to talk about, n not anything that's not relevant to you. Like I've filmed people said, oh, I don't want to talk about my, my ex-husband, bad part of my life, ex, let's move on to the next topic, whatever right. it might be. I encourage people to add topics that I don't know about that they want included. And uh, some people say, Carrie, your questions are great. Let's go through as many as we can. Some say your questions inspired me. Let's use a few of yours. And I've created a couple of mine. And then some people say, Carrie, your questions are great. I'm going to, I, but I'm going to make my own dialogue because yeah. I love what you've done. And I got my mind going and I've created my own dialogue. And I tell people there's no wrong way to do this. Yeah. No right way to do this. We're all unique individuals. And that's going to be the end product of every right. single movie unique to who we all are. So there's no messing it up. You know your story best. Yeah. And yes, it's a one shot deal. We do do this once, but this is going to be who you are today yeah. in this moment that we're talking. And um, it, it works really, really well. Yeah. So for the first seven years, I filmed only in the New York, New Jersey area where I can get in my car and drive to people. All those years I had people reaching out to me from all over the country saying, I live in California, I live in Colorado, I live in Utah. Can you film me? I, a, I didn't have the budget and B, sometimes yeah. people are so ill because my focus is people, individuals who have life limiting illnesses. So that uh, people sometimes wake up and don't have a good night's sleep and don't feel well. So I can't get on a plane or a train yeah. and travel to them. So I figured out a way for pre pre COVID. So five years ago of how to film people virtually. Ah, oh, that's amazing. And it works really, really well because thank goodness everyone has a video camera on their phone yeah. and those video cameras are really great quality. Mm -hmm. So I have people film themselves either on their phone, on their desktop, on their laptop, uh, iPads or whatever kind of a pad there might be, uh, or if they have a camcorder. And I have a whole system of, of how they should film themselves. I'm on the phone with them the entire time that they're filming themselves. Oh, wow. I'm going through filming tips. I'm supporting them if they get emotional. I'm checking in with them. I'm making sure they're hitting the record button and not yeah. taking a photo of themselves. <laughs> um, so, and then I give them, you know, the tips and, and the knowledge how to share the footage to me because they then yeah. share the footage with me afterwards. And then you put it all together and... Yeah, so I'm a memory together. live for really their families. Yeah, I really don't edit too much. All I do is put in texts and the text is like a chapter and that's yeah. what we talk about, the topic that we talk about. So it's not just 45 or 60 minutes of, you know, your loved one talking unedited. It's broken up into chapters. Okay. And then if uh, they send me photographs and I ask for no more than 50, I create a really nice slideshow at the conclusion of the live mm -hmm. footage that we oh. create together. And the slide shows photographs of them throughout their lives with yeah. their loved ones set to their favorite music. Ah. And the end product is then emailed to them. When I first started, it was DVDs. <laughs> of course. And, or CD, you know, and those right. became obsolete. And then uh, USB drives. And I've had some technical issues or have had some families have technical issues with the USB drives. Uh, so now I just email uh, the yeah. final product to the families. I hope you enjoy this episode of our Campfires of Hope podcast. Here at Epic Experience, we make it our goal to serve the cancer community through our collective programs, such as this podcast, our week-long adventure camps, regional programs across the country, and Thrive VR, a custom virtual reality experience benefiting patients in cancer centers. If you would like to be a part of our community of supporters, please go to epicexperience.org and click Donate. Thank you for listening to Campfires of Hope, Stories of Cancer. With gratitude, Wingman, also known as Colin Farrow, Executive Director of Epic Experience. Epic Experience is a registered 501c3 organization. So in your work with cancer survivors, what 
I mean, and I know everyone's different and they all have different kinds of cancer and they're at different stages in their journey. Mm -hmm. Can you think of any key lessons you've learned from, I mean, how many do you think you've worked with now? How many I've, people would you say? I filmed over 300 people. Wow. So yeah. from those, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think you've have been the top lessons you've learned from the cancer survivors that you've worked with? That humans have that the individuals that I filmed have had an inner strength that they never knew that they had. Mm. And this is what uh, cancer has brought out in them. I've sat with so many mm. people who've said, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm either too emotional or I'm too sick. I had a gentleman who had, who was on oxygen when I walked in and he really didn't want me to film him. Actually, I've had two. I, he don't want me to film them without, with without the ox oxygen on. And they said, I'm going to take this off for as long as I can. We talked for over an hour and 20 minutes. We didn't film for the hour and 20 minutes, but we talked for over an hour and 20 minutes. And then he's like, oh my God, I didn't have my oxygen on. Oh my gosh. You lose yourself in the process. Yeah. You, you, you lose what's going on in your body, what, what ailments you may have. And you're able to, to find the strength to dig deep and just to, to go through it. I mean, when do we all get to talk about our lives, reflect on our lives, reminisce. Yeah. And the process allows you to kind of, I don't know, if you, if you, for people who run, get that runner's high and you just right. <laughs> kind of get out of, get out of your head and just, you know, be in that moment. That that's kind of what this is like. And I've had so many people who have told me that they, they, they're, they're not sure they're going to be able to get through it. And they do. And they yeah. have, had, every, almost everyone says, I'm going to cry. And they don't. They find, they dig deep and, and they, they find that, that that inner strength and they're able to kind of get through it. So not only just that, but just they're to get up every day and, and, and to move on and to, uh, I've had so many people tell me that can having cancer is like a double-edged sword. Mm. Um, it's a blessing and a curse because it's uh, allowed them to um, live life in a different and, and more meaningful way. Yeah. Can you think of any uh, cancer survivor stories in particular that really hit home for you that were, I don't know, particularly emotional or touching or anything that really just made an impact on you? Um, yeah. Uh, I, I filmed a, a woman who was pretty much my age and had two boys that uh, were exactly my boy's age. Uh, and I did not know that going on. I knew she was around my age and I knew yeah. she had kids. And just sitting across the couch from her, I was, it was kind of surreal. Yeah. And listening to her and she was so upbeat and so strong and shared such incredible stories. And mm. her husband was there with her and, and like his strength was just, incredible and and she just really um embodied just just the ultimate strength that i've that i've ever seen because i think her kids were i think we were 11 and 13 which wow. are really tough no ages oh even, yeah but, no that's but, a tough age yeah those were, were tough ages and then her husband was has been such a champion for memories live he's um you know made a couple of like selfie videos that I could show at my um, uh, fundraisers talking about the, the, the positive aspects of, of memories live. And uh, he even shared a story that his, his boys, and this was several <coughs> years, this was several years later. <coughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, several years after she passed away. And, and one of the sections we, one of the things we talk about is college and advice for mm. college. And one of the sons didn't know what to do with college, like to pick this school or that school. And, the, and he's like, let me, let's, let's just look at the movie and see what mom said. Oh. And they looked at the movie and she, they listened to the section about college and the answer was right there. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. Ah, how rewarding. I mean, challenging, like you said, to go into that situation and, realize that you are the about the same age and have kids about the same age. So I'm sure that's 
that's challenging, but how rewarding as well for you. And then, I mean, that's life changing for those kids. The answer they were looking for was right there. Yeah, I mean, my goal is, you know, for, to make this for the the kids and the families and mostly, you know, most of the kids, a little bit the spouse, but mostly the kids yeah. and to help for them to look back five years, 10 years, 15 years, learn something new at a different phase of their life about their parent and get advice that you may be going to see differently as a 10 year old to a 15 year old to a 25 year old. And then yeah. the process of making it for for the individual that I'm filming is so cathartic and um, they're so grateful. People tell me I dreaded wanting to do this. I dreaded you coming. I dreaded yeah. calling you. And um, once we finished the filming, they're like, I can't believe I wasted so much energy um, worrying. Yeah, about putting this. it off. It's yeah. such a wonderful process, but it's something different. We don't do this every day so it's kind of like the unknown is often daunting yeah. uh, and it's so cathartic for them and yeah. people tell me i've wanted to leave jewelry or this or that but or write cards but doing this was just so easy and and such a wonderful process yeah well and i would imagine too you're talking about end of life you're talking about very sobering things and i would imagine for people to get up for them, it's an admission that I am not going to be here forever, right? Which none of us are, but for them, it's much more imminent. I would imagine that's difficult. Um, and it yeah, would keep I mean, people we don't, from... we don't talk about their disease. If people mm. want to, 100%, um, yeah. can, but we don't talk about the disease. But yes, the reason that yeah. they are making the movie is because right. it's near yeah. to the end of life. Yes. Is there anything else that you would want to share with someone listening that I haven't specifically asked you about? Um, the most important part is that Memories Live is a service that is free of cost. That's amazing. Uh, when I first started Memories Live, I knew that people would have so many stacks of bills and I didn't want anyone who mm. wasn't able to um, afford this to be able to do it. So I have a fundraiser once a year. I have grants that come and go, and that allows me to do this for the last 14 years, filming over 300 people, equal amount of men and women all over the world. I filmed in Canada. I even had someone in Australia. Ah, I awesome. didn't do the, the talking, but the friends filmed the person and I edited the footage. So, um, yeah, and happy to, to, um, to do this for anyone, anywhere. Awesome. Well, one fun question I'd like to end with is marshmallows over a campfire, slow and steady or flame and crispy? Slow and steady. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Well, Carrie, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk to us about Memories Live uh, and for sharing some important life lessons that we can all learn uh, from the cancer survivors that you've worked with. So thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. Until the next time we gather around the campfire, everyone, keep living beyond the cancer. Thank you for listening to this episode of Campfires of Hope, Living Beyond Cancer. For more information about Epic Experience and our programs or to donate, please visit our website at epicexperience.org. Music for this podcast is provided by Moonshiner Collective. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review us so we can share our story with more people. Also, be sure to subscribe wherever you get podcasts so you'll know when new episodes are released. We hope you come back and join us for our next episode. Music.